this is going to be another very special episode. This time featuring a 1977 General Electric 19-inch performance television and 1978 uh, General Electric performance television. Um, there's an interesting story between all uh, about all this, um, but I'll just give you the details up front. The one on the right is from 1977, and the model number is WYA7354WD with the YA. E chassis. I don't have the model number. The, st the t sticker's missing on that one, but it's the YAF chassis, and um, very few minor differences between the sets. Um, why are these special? Um, well, back in the day, I think it was around 1990, my one aunt got a 21 inch General Electric black and white TV. I thought it was awesome. I mean, because here's the thing it was a big 21 inch TV manufactured July 1980. And not only that, it was a performance television, but not only that, um, it got fantastic picture. I mean, it was razor sharp. And the other thing I noticed is um, it. it for, it was down at my grandma's house, and I remember yeah, she, my grandma only had an antenna at the time over the air, and that TV was pulling the signals so much better than the modern TVs in the house. And then and this General Electric seems so different to me. Fast forward about four years, a friend of mine's dad was a TV repairman at the time. And I don't know where he worked, but I know it was had something to do with General Electric. And one day, my friend Rob, he got this TV right here, this very TV on the right in his room. It's the exact TV. Now, this isn't the, this isn't the his, the same TV, but there's a story behind all this. And and I didn't know about it. I mean, I remember in his brother's room, he had two brothers that shared a room. They had this very TV on the left, which I totally, I mean, I knew they had this TV, but I didn't know it. And this is the one I found in the, in the snow, buried in the snow next to the dumpster at the storage unit earlier this year. And I was like, oh my God, it, it's the same TVs and they're back again. But here, here's the history on both these sets. The one on the right, I've had since... I think May of 2003. Um, when I well, there's a story behind how I got this one too. I was working a third shift at my first job, and all week sitting outside this on the way there, there was this trailer, and there was a pile of garbage sitting out in front of the trailer. When I saw this TV here on the right, um, I think it was face down. I, I remember seeing the back of it. I'm like, damn, I want to grab that. I mean, because I, I think I saw the dials on it and everything. I didn't know what it was. Then one day, it was it sat outside for a full week, I think. It, it was, it's been rained on and everything. Um, and so I, it, I think, no, okay, I, no, my fault. I was working second shift, but I worked overtime, so I was there until 2 in the morning. I was a quality control technician at a transformer factory. Um, so I come home, it was 2 in the morning, I stopped, I put, this is on a main road too, I just stopped, opened my trunk, ran across the street, grabbed the TV and threw it in my car. When I picked it up and got home, I was like, this is that TV, I, I, I don't believe it. And it worked, as is, uh, just needed a few adjustments, and uh, one thing I'm going to note to tell you about both TVs, they... And I'll show this when I have the backs off, but the General Electrics are, from this era are odd. It's an inline gun tube in a slotted mask, but it has a dynamic convergence board. I mean, yeah, it has the magnets in the middle of the set, the static convergence, but also has a dynamic convergence board external with uh, wire wound pots and uh, some inductor coils to adjust. I gotta say, this is gonna be the easiest set to do dynamic convergence on <laughs> now 
uh, what I was going to say was that dynamic convergence board on both had, on both, uh, mind you, had bad solder joints, which I repaired. And the TV still works, but it kept glitching on the corners, and the convergence kept going out. Fixed that, and everything else is fine. Okay, now, uh, now that I told you the history behind this TV here, the one on the left we got earlier this year, we were at the storage unit, and the elderly couple that had it decided they no longer wanted to do to have a storage unit service. And not only that, they weren't just selling it to a new owner. They were just going to wipe out the whole lot, sell it to somebody, and they were just going to get rid of it, the storage units. So we had to take our stuff from storage there to another storage unit, which is actually closer to our house now. But uh, all the trips we made out there to get everything out, it was in the middle of winter, and... One time we saw a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, every time we stopped, we checked stuff in the dumpsters. That's how we got the um, A, or this is the E50 dryer and the A50 washer, which I'm still working on. It'll be completed soon. I'll make a video on that. But anyhow, I, I saw a bunch of you know modern '90s and 2000s model CRTs in the trash. I started. I found this TV. It must have been outside for a while. It was buried all the way, it was laying face down, and it was buried up to its neck in snow. When I brushed the snow off the back, I immediately recognized the back cover and freaked out. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I actually got another General Electric, and I did. That was the back I saw. And... And uh, to say, I took it home, I had to unthaw it. It was completely frozen with frozen ice on the front of the picture tube. And uh, about a day or two later after we dried it out, turned it on, worked just fine, made a few adjustments, works perfectly. <laughs> and the one on the left is a high hour set. Um, I don't, I forget, um, I, I can't remember if they have the same picture tube number or not, but one thing I noticed about high hour sets sometimes is like the phosphors tend to yellow like that a little bit. Um, but I, I can't remember if they have the same picture tube or not. But that said, it still has um, excellent emissions and I was able to get grayscaled it perfectly on it. And this TV here has obviously had a long life because it still it was it was already a secondhand set. It had a Goodwill sticker on it. So whoever had it, you know, this wasn't the original owner. And then someone got it from Goodwill, and they probably used it for years, and then sat in storage. So that had, this left set has a lot of use. This one here, I don't know. Um, when I got it, it had like one of those stickers off a VHS tape. It said three above the the the, the VHF dial, I guess, so they know to put on channel three. Uh, I'm going to go through some things real quick because I'm really rambling here. Um, the I left this label on here. Whoever had it before put the date they bought it on there. November 26, 1977. So I don't know what the deal was with that. The one on the right. Um... Now, I'm just going to very quickly go over the differences between the two. Uh, very, very minor, just the layout. As you can see, just a one-year one year thing. It's mainly a cosmetic differences. The chassis are almost identical. They both work the same. In fact, the pictures look identical. Here's the difference. The 78 model has the automatic frequency control switch in the back, and this VHF-UHF terminal block is a bit different than this one as you can see but you can see the molding is there to put different controls right there because I mean it's there's like several controls that could be right here and as traditional fall General Electrics they have the built-in antennas and um, both of them still have their service information this one still has its uh, sticker on there data manufacturer fell off this one was able was still on I laminated it and put it back on and uh, now, I, I'm gonna, I'll go around to the front here for a second. General Electric called their contrast control custom picture. 
and definitely high hours because on this one too they rubbed on volume off on it. <laughs> but I remember that speaker grill and the blue General Electric and you have your color brightness and tint controls. This one here they put the newer style knobs on it still has custom picture on volume but automatic frequency controls in the back and the le right one or left one has more wood grain now what's the significance of these well I go over to my friend's house and he got, he got this TV in his room and he, had, he had, finally had a Super Nintendo in his room and we hook it up and I was like holy crap the picture is absolutely phenomenal on this and this is coming from me in the you know I, I, let's see, I was 11 almost 12 years old at the time and we had modern TVs at the time like it's still up in my room upstairs the 1990 Sears and we had a 1992 Panasonic 32 inch TV in the living room but I get this TV or I see his TV and I was absolutely blown away the colors were just absolutely amazing but not only that here's the thing I've noticed about these particular General Electric sets they get a very unique sharp picture I mean the sharpness is really razor freaking sharp on these and that's one thing I've always been obsessed with these sets and I've always wanted one and one by one they're coming in I mean this is just awesome um, so that's the backstory on this. Um, but like I said, my friend Rob, this was in his room, and I actually have a PXL 2000 video I'll demo on that. And this one here was in his brother's room. No video games hooked to it, just the rabbit ears, and I don't think they had good reception in his room, so I, I don't remember. I remember turning it on and playing with it because that's just what I did back then. But yeah, I just think it's funny that I, I ended up with both TVs that I was obsessing over uh, 20 years beforehand. And this, the, like I said, this one here, I'm look, you're looking at, I've had for um, 11 years now. And I use this one on a re regular basis, actually, because it's like one of my favorite TVs. Now they're both my favorites. And in this setup, and I'm going to do another separate video on this, I have a 1976 General Electric Porticolor. And below that is that recently restored 1986 General Electric. And before I play, I just want to also, something I've noticed, and I, I know, probably know why, but I never really looked into it. Uh, all, remember when I was mentioning things, um, I said 1970s CRT sets, we like peaked then because when you get to the 80s while the tubes would like virtually run forever the picture wasn't as good and I never thought about it but it seems like the older sets that did not have bias controls but rather to do grayscale you had three individual uh, G2 controls and um, and the larger guns and cathodes like the next much larger on these sets here I've noticed every one of these, even the uh, Zeniths, uh, you, you go from a Chroma Killer 2, whether it be a Delta gun or inline gun, to a System 3 and the picture quality, uh, the, the, the sharpness goes downhill and the, the look of it goes away. Um, so the thing is, if they just kept, and I have a feeling why, see what happened was when you went from these to this, this TV here has the G2 tied to one potentiometer and there's only one control grid and um, it's uh, you know one control grid control the G2 and you do grayscale by adjusting the bias of the video output going to the uh, cathodes to do grayscale but I like in contrast every once they went to the smaller, cheaper, and I have a feeling, I mean, I never looked into this, but I must say the cheaper, to, it was cheaper to manufacture because they, they have far less pins on the tube, much smaller. Um, that's probably why they did that. But that's the thing I'm noticing now. Uh, that's why I love 1970s era sets because those ones, I think we perfected it in the 70s. And then the 80s comes and it gets, you know, every manufacturer changes to cheapen it like RCA 
XL100. It's an 80 set. Its picture quality is on par of this, but these two sets blow it away. My Chroma Color 2s blow it away. Even my 67 Zenith of Sonderborg over there, you can't see behind the fans. Well, I still need to properly restore it. Its picture quality, too, is much sharper, very, very sharp, and blows it away. I mean, and that's the thing about people my generation. We're, we got used to, um, like, a, early 80s sets were good. Uh, they would run virtually forever, but once you get past the mid-80s into cheaper sets, the tubes lasted, like, didn't last very long. They would wear out quickly, and... Um, the performance was mediocre. Here's the back off the 1977 General Electric. It's a modular chassis. And uh, right here is your power supply and the big filter can multi-section can cap. Uh, right back there, that guy. Right there, right there. I'm trying to do this with my camera. My finger is pointing and making it too dark. It'd be at that big can there. Then your horizontal sweep and other um, uh, screen control board. Big flyback. And it does have a high voltage tripler. These, this is an inline gun tube but it still has a dynamic convergence board. Static convergence and purity. Oh, purity is going to be set up by those two rings there, but um, the static convergence is set up right there by this board here. And then you do the corners and, and top and bottom of this board. This TV is very easy to do um, the edge you know dy dynamic convergence on because if this didn't have that you have to tilt the yoke around the corners and use those rubber wedges you see there to get precise um, convergence I mean I get convergence really good on this set now like I said, this is the 77 model uh, it's the YAE chassis the 78 model is the YA F chassis. Very few minor differences between the two. Uh, that they're pretty much identical. Um, here's the back of that 1978 model. As you can see, it's nearly the same set. Just very minor differences, like you know where the power comes in. That board's different there, but very minor otherwise. Same convergence board. This is the YAF chassis. At least that's what that label in the service literature say as well. Both these sets, the 77 78, do have the service literature on the back. And definitely um, very uh, comparable picture quality between the two. Um, though the 78 model has m many more hours on it than this one, but they're still very bright and sharp, no doubt. So I'm gonna quit rambling. I'm gonna start demoing these. So everything's here. What we'll do? I have it hooked up to this um, 2004 JVC deck. It's a really odd. Deck. They say it's professional deck. It, it has professional features, but it's on a consumer chassis. It's really odd. Because it has a time, a pseudo time-based corrector. It's just like a digital frame buffer with filters and everything. And it's really odd. It records in standard play. No, no. Okay. It can play back four different speeds and play back. Or, or, or what am I saying? It can record in three different speeds and play back on four different speeds. There's actually, it, it, and I'll just say them all: standard play, long play extended play and super extended play this VCR has jacks in the back and BNC adapters it was designed to be used as a security system and super extended play gives about 15 to 18 hours I can't remember on a I think uh, uh, 18 hours on a um, 
T180 video cassette. And the picture quality looks like it does in those older store, um, you know, those old security cameras videos you'd see back in the day. So it's pretty weird, but anyhow, um, we'll do this. The VCR is on. snow because I didn't turn on the RF modulator on the VCR. Uh, these also take a, they're solid state but they take a little, little bit longer to warm up. They have the older style heaters and everything. But that said, it's going to be hard to convey this over YouTube, you have to be here in person to experience it, but this is RF, mind you. This looking at the on-screen menu for the VCR is absolutely amazing. I mean, just wow. The sharpness of it, and both you know, the focus, the scan lines, and the pictures is amazing on these sets. Just because I'm gonna turn on the turn on the uh, 86 and turn on the Porta Color. Yep. Well, you can't really see it. Uh, definitely, a, if you do a side by side, you'll see a big difference between this TV and this one. And this one here's still warming up. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Porta Colors were the first truly portable color TV ever made, 1966. Uh, I'll get into that. And they were the last known tube, all tube TV ever made. I did a video on it. I have a 1968 model mint in the box. I'll do another one, but I'm going to get into that in another video. Leah is sitting there obsessing over the VCR every time I change modes. How the deuce did you know I was a doctor? A surgeon, to be exact. Just returned from military duty in Afghanistan. Am I right? Oh, uh, 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 yes. I may have Major to, uh, David Q. Dawson. I got the picture adjusted normal could you on the TV. might be too bright for the camera, but... ...together with a Lambert stitch, which of course only a surgeon uses. And the thread is a unique form of cat gut, easily distinguished by its peculiar pungency, found only in the Afghan provinces. I never did an official video on the 78 model, Actually, elementary, my dear but person. I recently just cleaned these both up again. This one after having it for 11 years. So. What in heaven's name? And these TVs are extremely bright too. Mr. Like I got the contrast control halfway up. How many times? Oh, it's extremely yeah, bright. Quite all right. Uh, mm, I get really cranky. Some of those delightful like cheese crumpets of yours. Why did you fetch our guests some? So, I mean, the camera's probably compensating, but the left one's already really bright, and this one's like burn your retinas bright right now. <laughs> And it still remains sharp, too. That's just yes, what's awesome about it. See, it's actually overloading the camera a bit. It'll turn it down, match the... Match both TVs. Damn, it's like more than... Yeah, about halfway down, I would say. Yes. Crap! The most inopportune time. It just amazes me also, like, I pulled both these TVs out of the trash. Both have been rained on, snowed on, frozen. And yet, all original parts. And it works just fine. By a bat. Did you say bat? Yes. Did he have a crippled wing? One fidget by name 
Is it the employee of the very fiend who was the target of my experiment? The horror of my every waking moment? The nefarious Professor Ratigan? Ratigan? He's a genius, Dawson. A genius. The only blemish on this TV is the one tip for the one element appears to be missing. But that's it. At least it's intact. That one there is completely intact. He's narrowly defeated my class. But I polished up the cabinets, and that's what happens. I activate the VCR again, and she came running back. She also loves the printer. Just to watch it, I mean, as soon as she hears it come on. <laughs> Look at her. Hey, Leah. Watch me eject the tape. <laughs> her eyes are big and round. <laughs> what did it do, Leah? <laughs> That's me talking 20 years ago. Now, I don't know if you can make it out too well, being a PXL 2000 tape, but do you see it? There it is. The General Electric on the General Electric 20 years later. You know what's messed up is, um, geez, that TV would have been, what, 17 years old in 1994 already. And I was absolutely amazed at how it, the picture quality was. I even had his dad come in. He was actually amazed at the picture quality. Because, I, I don't know, and then he actually took the back off of it for me and showed me what everything was in the TV. See, look at me! I'm adjusting to his TV! I'm adjusting to his TV. That's what I used to do back then. I used to... That's <laughs> for a greenish like very... See, I kept messing with his TV, but I, I had to get it right, you know? I was in a hurry, Rob, so, so we're almost out of tape. Let me run it. Why don't I choose tape? I only tape Rob running so that this cell and the tape runs out. No, I'm just super Nintendo. This is a Super Nintendo and it's high quality. Yeah, and Sega's the worst one here. <laughs> We were like both anti Sega back then. I, I forgot that I had the camera last time. Oh, oh no, he's dead. Listen to this sound, everybody. Look at this the GE speaker logo. It's a speaker, isn't it? And here's the 53 knob. I, I call it the 53 knob. And, and of course, Rob gets to take me. It's a free. I like guys uh, like. Oh, I hit the button. Listen this sound, everybody. So yeah, I, I did a close up, you know, it was the exact speaker and I called the UHF dial, even though I know it's UHF, I called it the 53 dial because Fox 53 was like the main channel I watched back then. And then, you know, GE Performance Television. I just thought that was amusing that I showed that. There you go. Everyone was amazed that I had this camera that could record on the audio cassettes. 
like that. Now to do it just like back in the day. This is actually my cartridge. Um, must have cleared it out a while ago. Backup battery is still good in mine. I've had this game since uh, 1993. Doing so good. Back in the day, I even on 150 cc, I'd just be winning. For a flat to engage. Super Mario Brothers 3 on World 7, just like I did 20 years ago on this very TV. I remember when this game came out on the NES back in 1990, how big of a deal it was. say this convergence on both these TVs is perfect even all the way out to the corners oh, I got the controller set up like that okay. See, back when Mario All-Stars came out, even though it's the same games, I was freaking out because of the um, advanced, you know, the better graphics and sound. I, I actually did several PXL 2000 tapes, just comparing the differences between um, the Mario All-Stars version and the uh, NES version. I have like hours worth of that stuff. But just looking at everything right now, this is as I remembered it. And it's a drastic different drastically different picture quality. And it also helps the scan lines are very, very, very sharp. But the sharpness control you can turn it up all the way on these TVs. These General Electrics right here, and not have any, uh, you know, it's all sharp, sharp peaking sharpness does is uh, just the high frequency part of the signal, and usually you get ghosting around objects. Then looking at video games would be a prime example, but not on here. It looks 
and this is RF. I mean, just imagine if they took uh, nothing wrong with RF. Um, see, all these older TVs handle it much better than what most people are used to. Imagine if they just kept the same type of technology in these sets here and just kept adding to it. I mean, these sets are also easier to work on. They were modular. I still had never sat down and beat this game on level 3. I forget, I always had like a certain control I used, but I think I'm just going to go to A. Why not, we'll do training real quick. There we go. It's not, it's not on camera, but I got like... I got four TV... or one, two, three, five TVs. All displaying this. Now I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a game. We're on level three. God, I remember when I first played this and I heard that, and it, this game was like amazing. Good luck. NES Advantage, whatever it was called, the joystick. It was like the NES Advantage, but it was made by a third party, but it was an officially licensed product. I got so used to playing this game with that joystick instead of the regular controller. I'm not doing this a bit right now, and personally, I don't care. It's just to show. I'm freaking out about playing this game on the TVs here. I knew that was going to happen. soundtrack in this game too. Star Fox 64 had a kick-ass soundtrack. It's also cool, one of the cables I'm using, you know, that Super VHS VCR down there to use uh, for Super Nintendo. I bought all the um, cables you could use for the Super NES using the optional S video cable that it came with. Maybe almost six. It's actually the wrong control, I think. Well, your old business, folks. What a dick. GE on the right, I used it every day nearly when I lived at my parents. And I used it regular, semi regularly since I moved in here. Just only recently I took it apart and cleaned it out after owning it for 11 years. 
go. Fresh car soon. Portsmouth, Virginia. I'm not doing good. to black this high voltage will go up and there you have it the 1977 and 1978 General Electric televisions yeah they have the high voltage discharge crackle when you turn them off I love it I love 70 sets that do that <laughs> 